theme of the project cycle is how do crises shape society? When I started the initial brainstorming phase, I decided to break down the question. I decided to focus on the word crisis, which is defined by Merriam-Webster Dictionary as an unstable or crucial time or state of affairs in which a decisive change is impending, especially one with a distinct possibility of a highly undesirable outcome. When I read the words unstable, impending change, and undesirable outcome, my mind immediately went to the Middle East, in particular, the conflict between Israel and Palestine. The conflict most certainly fits all the criteria. The region has always been unstable due to the constant turmoil and war. Peace deals have been trying to be settled for decades, and as the peace treaty seems further and further away, an undesirable outcome seems more and more likely. I became particularly interested in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict after attending an event two years ago run by an organization called Peace Players. Peace Players uses the power of sports to unite, educate, and inspire young athletes to create a more peaceful world. The programs they offer include athletic training in teams, peace education, and leadership development to those living in communities of conflict. At the event I was attending, a team made up of Israeli and Palestinian girls were visiting the United States and came to my previous school to play a pickup game with our high school girls basketball team. We had an incredible time playing basketball, and at the end we got to hear the girls' stories about how they joined the program and how it has impacted them, which was definitely my favorite part of the whole event. The Peace Players event definitely sparked my interest in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and so when I heard the topic for the X-Day project cycle, I knew I wanted to explore it as a possible crisis. I started by doing some research. It was very overwhelming for me at first because there were so many complexities in the crisis. It is so much more than just a conflict over territory. There are two things that struck me about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. First, the issue is so complex that it is very difficult to understand. I think that this, as well as distance away from the conflict, has made it very easy for citizens such as Americans to skip all of the work that would be required to understand all the complexities and instead make ill-informed opinions and judgments on the conflict, or choose a side without considering all viewpoints. What also struck me about the research that I was doing was how hopeless a solution of peace sounded. The way that each author described the conflict and the criteria that would need to be met in order for there to be peace, it seemed obvious that they didn't think a solution would ever occur. However, when I met those girls two years ago, I saw Israelis and Palestinians coming together, working together, understanding one another, and interacting in peace. Most importantly, I saw a group of Israeli and Palestinian young leaders who were being taught how to resolve conflict. That day, I became so confident that in the future, these girls will be able to work towards peace between the two nations. The thesis of my project is that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, even though it's very deep-rooted and complex, can one day be solved if the next generation of leaders can make small steps towards peace. I wanted to bring two ideas together in my project. The first is the impact of the crisis on individuals, and the second is the hope that can be seen in the next generation of leaders. I wanted my message to have a really lasting impact on the viewer, so I decided to make a mural. When I've looked at murals in the past, being able to stand in front of something and it being so large really engulfed me into the message, which is what I really want to do with my piece as well. I decided to make this documentary to complement my mural so that people can get a background of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and can understand the meaning behind the piece. To fully be able to understand and experience the mural, I think it's important to have some basic knowledge on the conflict. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict started in the early 20th century. It started as Zionism became very prominent in Europe among Jews. Zionism is the belief that Judaism is a nationality and a religion, and that Jews serve their own state in their ancestral homeland of Israel. As Zionism started to rise, the persecution of Jews in Europe began to increase as well. Both of these things led to hundreds of thousands of Jews migrating from Europe to what was then British-controlled Palestine from 1896 to 1948. The Arabs saw this new influx of Jews in their territory as a European colonial movement, which led to a lot of violence and conflict. Palestine, as well as the Arab states of Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, and Syria, chose to declare war on Israel. This conflict ended with Israeli forces defeating the Palestinian militaries and Arab armies in a war that turned 700,000 Palestinians into refugees. At the end of this war, Israel had 77% of the lands and Palestinians were left without a state. Since that initial war, there have been two intifadas, which are Palestinian uprisings against Israel. The first intifada was in the late 1980s, which was a series of nonviolent acts like boycotts and Palestinians refusing to work jobs in Israel, as well as attacks using rocks, gasoline bombs, and occasionally firearms. The Israeli military responded to the protests and attacks with heavy force, leading to many more Palestinians being killed than Israelis. The second intifada started due to a mistrust after the collapse of the peace process in 2000, 
when negotiations between the Israeli Prime Minister and the PLO chairman broke down. It began after Israeli soldiers fired on a series of Palestinian demonstrations. This intifada was much bloodier than the first as Palestinians used suicide bombings, rocket attacks, and sniper fire. The conflict fizzled out five years later after 1,000 Israelis and 3,200 Palestinians were killed. These wars have resulted in many negative effects for citizens of both nations. For one, there has been a Palestinian refugee crisis, which is referred to as Nakba, which is Arab for catastrophe. After the 1948 war, 700,000 Palestinians were banned from the area. Today, there are more than 7 million Palestinian refugees. Another negative effect of the crisis are Israeli settlements that have specifically hurt Palestine. While Palestine legally has control of the West Bank, 130 settlements, which are communities that house over 500,000 Israelis, have moved to the West Bank starting in 1967. Most of these settlements are on the border of the West Bank, which blurs the boundaries of any future Palestinian state. One challenge during this conflict has been the standing of the Palestinian government. There is no unified Palestinian authority, which has complicated peace talks greatly. Instead, there are two factions. The first is the PLO, which is the Palestinian Liberation Organization. In 1993, the PLO accepted Israel's right to exist in exchange for Israel recognizing the PLO as the legitimate representation of the Palestinians. With this deal, the PLO was able to conduct peace talks with Israel on behalf of the Palestinians. However, it is extremely hard for these deals to ever be implemented because of Hamas. Hamas is a Palestinian Islamic political and militant group that has waged war in Israel since 1897. Tensions between the two factions have always been high, and eventually in 2006, Hamas won a slight majority of seats in the Palestinian Authority, which led to a civil war between the two groups. This resulted in Hamas governing Gaza independently and the PLO governing West Bank. Without a united government, it is nearly impossible to uphold any kind of agreement throughout the entire territory. In terms of managing the conflict, it is very challenging for the two governments to approach it because there is such little trust. The Palestinian government does not trust the Israeli government because they say that this settlement expansion of Jews moving to the West Bank is Israel trying to prevent a Palestinian state from being possible. At the same time, Israel is concerned that due to the PLO-Hamas split, peace agreements would not be upheld in the entirety of Palestine. It is very clear from the nature of the conflict that the issue is very deep-rooted and won't be solved easily. However, like I mentioned before, my interactions with the girls from Peace Players have made me really hopeful that one day we will reach peace. I wanted to bring that hopefulness as well as personal accounts of the conflict into my artwork. I started by creating my design. I really wanted to use symbolism to represent peace in my work. I was really inspired by a wedding of two of her family friends, the husband who is Arab and the wife who is Turkish, and they gave out olive branches during their wedding to all the guests and used them as decorations, which I thought was such a beautiful object and symbol of peace. So, I decided I wanted to incorporate olive branches into my work as well. The olive branches make up a much larger design of a peace sign, which is a clear representation of peace, and I think will be a very clear indication of what I'm trying to portray to the viewer when they look at my work. I hope by creating such a large piece, it will allow the viewer to feel immersed in the work and fully engaged as they look at it. I also hope that the beautiful and vibrant colors that I use allows the viewer to see the beauty and the opportunity that we have as future leaders to change history and hopefully be able to find an end to the conflict and the violence. The next part of my work is the text. The purpose of my work is to get people to understand and look at the conflict from someone else's personal lens, and there is no better way to do that than by hearing someone's personal story who has been affected by the conflict. I interviewed two girls who both live in Jerusalem and are a part of the Peace Players program. The first girl is Serene, who is Arab and is a 10th grader. The second girl is Tamar, who is Israeli and is in 8th grade. On May 20th, we had a Zoom call and talked about how the conflict has affected their personal lives and their thoughts on the future. It was amazing to me to hear about their views on the other side before they joined Peace Players and then how that changed once they joined the program. They shared with me some ways in which the conflict was present in each of their lives and how that impacted their views on Israelis and Palestinians and how it has affected their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. I was young. So um, actually, my dad is from the West Bank. Well, let's say um, each time, like every time I like we want my family, we want to go to Bethlehem or to somewhere. So we have to go through that checkpoint. And like uh, in the past, they didn't let my dad go to these places, like go out of the hall. 
because uh, my dad didn't have the ID. So, like, let's say when I was young and when I when I saw that they didn't let they didn't letting my dad to go in. So you know, every time I was like, uh, "Mom, where where are the like?" why why not you know i was like yeah i was scared you know i didn't really understand what's happening but i just hate them the next part of our conversation was about the future i wanted to dive into the steps that the girls believe need to be taken in order to achieve peace and how they think that their lives would be different if the conflict never existed what fascinated me the most were their answers on the steps that they think should be taken In my research, the solutions that I came across were very large-scale, and at the same time, very unlikely that both sides would ever agree to it. The solutions proposed in the academic articles were two-state solutions, a non-democratic state governed by a Jewish minority, or an end to the Jewish state. However, the girls have faith in small-scale solutions. They believe that peace can be achieved by implementing more programs that allows Jews and Arabs to interact and reach an understanding. I think um, it should be small steps, like having a basketball team or, um, I don't know, like see um, other schools that are like Jewish and Arab schools to get to know each other, to just learn about them in like in my school, to have uh, lessons that will teach me about Arab cultures or Arab like kids. Like, I think it's small steps. If If someone will bring something huge or big or a great idea, but like something that's too much, a lot of people wouldn't like, will just walk away, wouldn't even try. The final step to this project was installing the mural onto the wall. Tamara's story is told in the blue leaves and Serene's story is told in the purple ones. On the right side, you can read about how Serene's life has been affected by the conflict. And on the left side, you can see how Tamara's life has been affected. Written on the lines leading up to the middle of the peace sign, each girl describes the steps that they think need to be taken to reach peace. And finally, on the middle line, the girls come together and describe what life would be like without the conflict. I hope that when people stand in front of this mural or view it online, they feel like they are stepping into someone else's life and can begin to understand the conflict in the point of view of someone who is deeply affected by it, rather than as someone who is far away and isn't affected. When looking at the mural online, viewers can click on each leaf and hear the girl saying the quote that's written on it which I hope will aid the experience of fully immersing yourself into someone else's life. I also included my favorite quote from JFK at the bottom of the mural. If not us, who? If not now, when? To be used as a prompt for personal reflection. I hope that these stories can serve as a beacon of hope and flip the script on the idea that the crisis will never be solved. I also hope that the visions for the future shared by Tamar and Serene can be adapted to be all of our visions. My final wish is that we can use their hope to inspire the next generation of leaders to not give up and to prioritize solving this crisis before it has a chance to impact more and more lives in a negative way.